Welcome, welcome, welcome to kind of twitch.tv slash Wednesday old channel, but mostly just Stammer Stream, the podcast that continues to go on despite the quickly r- rotating cast on the level of The Walking Dead. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm wondering if we, wondering we shouldn't. I'm wondering if we shouldn't just call these episodes the Stammer Casts. <laughs> the Stammer. At least we yeah, rotate exactly. the same people in and out rather than just add new ones all the time. Though that I mean, at least we're not killing off concept. At least we're not killing off the people who leave. Why do you think like, Jenner's not... not here? Well, I mean, it's cert- I, I feel like it's we'd get a lot less guests in the sense that, like, hey, Loon Ramayasha, you want to come on the podcast? As a heads up, if you leave, you have to die. <laughs> Anyway, as you can hear, I am not your stammering host, Wensadale Cheddar. I am Dr. Nova, and I'm here with... Grail9. And... and Ho- Dr. Hoven. Indeed. Two fake PhDs in the house to talk about manga here today. <laughs> <laughs> well... Alright, so we're gonna, we're gonna start off as we usually do with One Piece, chapter... 897. Indeed. Um, so. Kakao Island escape plan. Mm-hmm. The, there were no real surprises here for me. It was kind of every one of the beats I expected to fall into place pretty much fell into place. Um, Luffy getting rescued, um, the Vin Smokes turning up to save him at the last minute. Uh, the, the only real curveball here was um, the introduction of the, uh, uh, Peckham's is too long form, which didn't really affect much, so, yeah. Though, I do kind of like that, even when he took the form, he was kind of immediately pressed down by all these people, like, even then, he was really just trying to buy some time as a distraction. Mm. I, I felt so bad for him. <laughs> yeah, like... they, they probably took his eyes out. We saw that there was a panel they said, gouge his eyes out, and next pal, someone's bringing down a scythe on him. Oh, it's messed up. F. <laughs> yeah, th- these, though, are chapters of One Piece I really like. Uh, this is, this takes me back a lot to the Marine Marineford arc, where you have, like, characters trying to escape, but so many people are trying to stop them, and you get, like, little hints of what they can do. Like, you get, I think his name's Raisin, like, coming up with his sword when Sanji comes in. You get like the almost like baby face guy who can use moonwalk and then suddenly turns his staff into a wrecking ball. I don't know why. I love this guy all of a sudden. I don't know his name. <laughs> I'm but guessing he... <laughs> he's got some kind of devil fruit. Something like that, but like jeez, he is <laughs> like that's something that's so weirdly badass to me. Like so somebody who can just walk on air and also like turn his staff into a wrecking ball. <laughs> Yeah, but that also does make sense, like, they got a ton of Big Mom's forces here, so they mm-hmm. would have someone who knows Airwalk, just like Sanji. It's not a technique exclusive to him. It wasn't even mm-hmm. his by fur. His fur yeah, the, the cypher poles used it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm... So it's just cool seeing, like, all these different children of Big Mom showing up in a sense. And, like, you don't get a ton ton from them like it's not like oh yeah i want like a raisin fight now it's like no you you got to see what he could do and he was cool um you get to see a little bit more of snack and he he looks pretty goofy honestly <laughs> which one of them was snack <laughs> snack was the uh general who uh like he used to be one of the three sweet commanders you see him very briefly uh, reacting to the fact that the Vin Smokes have shown up. Oh, okay. That's just so many Big Mom kids, I cannot remember all their names. I... I will say, though, I'm... I'm hesitant for next chapter. Because I really, really hate the Vin Smokes. I... I understand what Oda's trying to go for with them, but I feel like their story has been kind of botched a little bit. So it's like, are... it is kind of like, thank God this arc has had so much else going for it, because if yeah. these guys were the only <laughs> focus, really? because, well, I mean, at least Sanji's party has been really damn compelling. Sa- Sanji's part has, but honestly, the way that a lot of the Vin Smoke story has been handled, I cared way more about seeing these guys get beat up than anyone 
All right, so honestly, one of the reasons I like this arc so much, <coughs> sorry, I like this arc so much, is I kind of like the Big Mom Pirates in general. They seem kind of fun. Okay, at least we get Sorry. more Reiju, and Reiju's still awesome. I, I do like Reiju, I just, like, I can't... I think next chapter's gonna be like, look how badass the Vin Smokes are taking out a bunch of people. I'm like, I mean, yeah, but they're also, like, mass murdering assholes. So I'm not sure how much I can get behind them. Uh-huh, sure. Well, at least they do help esca the escape, probably. And they mm -hmm. do, do have their own reason, like, these guys tried to fuck with us. We're gonna fucking kill them! Yeah. And besides, this was foreshadowed earlier when they di we did see, like, they had be they had sent someone to deliver twin smokes and they just got their asses kicked. And mm. Yeah, I guess, I just... I, mean, what I, I don't know, I can't... I'm not sure how much I can get behind the chapter of, like, look how cool the bin smokes are, and I'm like... I don't know, that, that flashback with Sanji pretty much just proved that these guys are, like, unrepentant dickheads through and through. I mean, part of it might be part of it is that they were made to be that way. And Which, again, like... Literally it, made. But that was such a weird throwback, in the sense that, like, they were said, like, oh, they were made to have no emotions, but they know how to be, like, sadistic dickheads. Like, uh, and still it, know how to be horny for Nami. Exactly. So it just sort of seemed like... Like... It, it's just a weird idea. It's like, okay, you have a chance to build your children, but why do you build them to be assholes? Like, it's like it just seems like weird stuff is omitted and weird stuff stays around. It just, I don't know, the whole, like, they were born without emotions to me just kind of seemed like a lazy justification for why they are this way. But that, that's just me. Okay, I think for me it's just a case of their, um... There are so many memorable, horrible people in the One Piece universe that the series is very good at making you like want to see get punched. And these guys are just don't they don't. There's not much that makes them stand out for me. Yeah, I don't know. It it's still a good chapter. Like it, it's a really fun one. Yeah. Um, Any, yeah. Anywho, yeah, but... now that we're done talking about One Piece, shall we move on to Shokugeki no Soma? <laughs> sure. Um, this was actually uh, one of those chapters that made me care a little bit. Yeah, I quite like this chapter. Um, I think it is true that a lot of the time people can respond to better work when, you know, they aren't surrounded by yes men. Um, and I like this angle of Sukasa is fed up of being surrounded by people who just think his stuff is great. And like the reason he gravitates to um, Azami so much is that he actually is like, no, this is all this is rubbish. You can do so much better than this. Uh, he's the first person to tell him that. Yeah, but I also see it as kind of his own, partially his own flawed mindset of like, yeah, these people just don't appreciate enough because they're not culinary experts. Like. Bitch, not everyone in the world can be a culinary expert. Should also your so your masons be like, we're not gonna build house for you anymore because you don't truly appreciate the architecture we put in. I mean, it. I guess that makes sense as to why she'd be behind uh, Azami's plan of let's just get rid of McDonald's and make everything gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I understand his mindset. I. Said, and I do think it's flawed, but I think it's intentionally a flawed mindset. Like, the reasoning that if if your movement can only be judged by those within it, then it's doomed to fail. Because it works in an echo chamber. Mm. Yeah, it's it's something that comes up in the food world a lot. The idea that like people don't really understand the concept of fine dining very much, like it, has, like basically on every six, like whenever Gordon Ramsay like posts a like, look at this dish I had. There's always like ten million dickheads who are like, that dish is so small. Why the fuck would you pay for that? And it's the idea like, well, I mean, in most fancy restaurants, you're getting like twenty of them, like twenty different dishes. So if you had a steak for every single one, you're gonna get bloated. So you can kind of understand. Sukasa's idea of like I'm trying so hard I'm putting so much stuff on the plate and people just kind of don't get it. 
So you can see how Azami's mindset of what if we just made this the norm? What if every single restaurant in the world was like this? Then everybody would understand what you're like. It's it's still a flawed concept because obviously there's the financial issues, there's the creative issues. Yeah, like the finance are biggest one. Like, okay, yeah, I'm supposed to eat twenty, but you're still charging me forty euros for one. So how the hell am I supposed to afford twenty of them? At the same time, though, la last last night, me and my girlfriend went to like a sushi house, and we had this like baked sushi with like cheese, onions, and mushroom on it. And I was like, Tommy, I'm with you now. If you're wiping out all of this bullshit, <laughs> if you're wiping out all this disgusting fusion cuisine crap, I am so on board for you, with you, man. <laughs> Whereas when he, if he would be going to my favorite pizza place and just saying, okay, this is not my gourmet, tear it down. I would be there with my shotgun to defend it. It's an airsoft shot, no, exactly. I'd still be able to hit him with it pretty hard. No, but I hope that's just like a zombie's motivation. He's gone to all this different, like, <laughs> shitty fusion restaurant, and he's like, Are you... T pad Thai with mozzarella cheese on top? Not in my perfect world! It is also one note that it's a little nicer to see that the Elite 10 can actually work together, rather than, you know, they've kind of been antagonistic mm -hmm. against one another, usually. Like, everyone shits on Azon, Kino Kuni's kind of the, the tsundere who doesn't really react that well to anything. And, well, what was it? Yeah, Rindo just dumped all her work for Tsukasa the one time, while he also had to do... Uh, what was the a, the Chinese cuisine guy's name? Why the hell can I remember him? He's one of the resistance. Uh, Kuga. The Kuga's, Kuga's and Azon's works on it. Yeah, I... There's there's one panel that like makes me laugh to no end where you see Azami eating and it's not just that he's eating like evilly like I've never seen someone eat anything with this much like palpable villain energy to it but just when it's like there's nothing on that fork. <laughs> not... Well, maybe <laughs> it's know, coming like... out of his mouth. But he his mouth is open like that so it just looks like he's about to place it in there. It's like there's nothing on that fork. Dude. You missed. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the food. Wow. Yeah, but I didn't even notice that that was a zombie because he, he's so heavily in shadows. Probably Who just like, no one likes him, so they put him in the one corner where the lighting doesn't work. But who else is it gonna be? Like, who else in this possibly? Yeah, I like, know it, that when I look at it, that it's a zombie. Just missed it the first time I read, but... No, I know, but I also think it's just like, who else could it possibly be? Like, who is it? Oh, it's Hayama. He... He was there and he really hated Yeah, food. I just first thought it was just like representation of how he sees them like them in this darkness. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's probably yeah. a zombie and they stuck him in the corner where the lights don't work because he's kind of a <laughs> dick. Mm. Well, at least Richard Nixon liked the food. <laughs> it looks a lot like Richard Nixon. <laughs> All right, so uh, are we all are we all done with Shokugeki no Soma? Uh, yeah, do we want to move on to Boku no Hero Academia? Don't you Ooh, be goody. my Hero Academia? <laughs> <laughs> no, n new title for the stream. It it's the Weeb Stream. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to talk about Boku uh, Go Boku ga Benkyo Wadeki Nai. <laughs> Or how about Boku Tachima Benkyo Ka Yeah, that's, that's what I meant, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, um, so obvious fake out at the end of last chapter leads into this. Yeah, though I kind of get why, maybe why they were coming from, like, it's the t usual tactic of tell someone a really bad news, then say, that was lying, but here are some slightly w less bad news. Just it's such like ball. an odd, but it's such an odd management tactic because usually you try to put a positive spin on everything, but instead it's like, no, we're just going to like do a really, really negative thing beforehand and then tell you the good thing. Yeah, but then again, these are kids, like, they don't, they're not exactly management experts, at least Ashido isn't. Ashino had to buy sunglasses for this, though. It seems like a weird plan. <laughs> she had to buy sunglasses and a suit Maybe jacket. Maybe she just had Momo make some. 
I like to think she bought them. Like, <laughs> I like to think this was a really active plan or, in her wait, mind. Since she's such a gangster breakdancer, she already had those. She didn't buy mm -hmm. any. She, she's gotta have her street cred, man. Yeah. Um. She's gotta so, pop and lock and dance and break. Yeah. So, so, uh, Deku gets, um, so it looks like Deku's gonna get even more technology to help out, uh, you know, with controlling all, one for all, uh, which seems pretty good. Yeah, but um, it's not the first time. Like, everyone in the class uses some support items to help with their quirks. Mm -hmm. Like, if you read the volumes, they have, like, their costume breakdowns and what they have what they, like, use in them. I'm not sure if that was also, like, in the manga itself, or it was mm -hmm. just the collected volumes. Yeah. It also means we get more appearance from Jellyfish Hair Girl. May. I <laughs> also like the fact that... I also like the fact that Deku finds Gentle's video by googling T, essentially. <laughs> uh, by the way, can we just talk about how fucking adorable these two dorks are? I love oh, them no. so much. <laughs> I, I was getting a huge... we talking like I know one dork who's pretty adorable. I I was I was getting a huge Team Rocket vibe oh, out of these people dork. the whole time, and just when you find out like their backstory <laughs> and like of like I was just oh my god I I don't want them to succeed obviously but I just God I want, I want these them two to, be to catch happy. a break. <laughs> I want these two to be happy. <laughs> I do. Yeah, they're not gonna be- if they can't get a single like, I mean, that's almost impossible. I don't Which think... is hilarious, because it means that even La Brava isn't liking the videos. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I gotta ask, is La Brava just a midget or a kid? That's what I'm I wondering. Think a, I think she's a kid. I think because... it's both. Like, she is younger, I, I... but also just like... Like, did they say? She, I'm gonna check if they said how long ago it was that they first she, met. She might be a little person. She might just. It might just be a quirk, honestly. Like it. It might just because you know we have, we have people who like turn into dinosaur men. We could just have somebody who, you know, their quirk has. <coughs> sorry, something to do with the low stature. Mm. Or she might like be a kid. Like it's sort of if. She, She's probably not like an outright kid. Mm. She, because... it's, it's the thing is, she's such a sort of larger than life character that it's it's kind of hard to really tell from her mannerisms. Yeah, um, but honestly, like finding out this little revelation about them is very very nice. It's it's certainly because like, I know a lot of people weren't big on Shisaki. I liked him fine, but this is what I'd say. Th this is something that's really good going into this arc. Is just like you know, establishing a relationship between them and establishing a lot of character. Yeah, and I would say that Hero Akas strength has always been in its villains. Be it the the Shigaraki and his like growth stain and his twisted ideal, just the sheer larger the life qualities of all for one. And now these two. Like Chisaki was kind of a weaker one, but I think he was mostly weaker because he was in context to all these great villains. Mm -hmm. He would have been a fine, serviceable villain in any other series. Also, anyway. I just love how much of a dork Deku is when he's like, Oh god, I wasn't aware of something about All Might! I'm a failure <laughs> as a nerd! <laughs> uh. mm -hmm. In any case, uh, so... We're done with uh, Boku no Hero Academia. Do you want to move on to Buraku Kuroba? <laughs> if we must, we must. Do we gotta? So, so do either of you guys have a big lengthy rant about this chapter or not? What the fuck happened? <laughs> That's not really what a rant, but I kind of concur. Like, it's at hard to times tell who's talking and which elf is which because, well... Okay, this is gonna sound racist, but they all do kind of look the same. They got the same hair color, all of them. Also, I'm, I... so... I'm just so fucking confused. Leashed isn't leashed. He's some human dude who was only... Has this person ever been, 
like in any of these chapters. It's okay, like, why should I care? But he's not leashed because whatever he is, who he's been these for the past bit of the series. Uh, like, so I understand that part. Like, Leaf isn't Leaf because this Leaf is a friend of Leaf from whose perspective we saw the whole chapter. He's just for some reason reincarnated as being exactly lo looking like Leech. Don't know why, but there uh, you go. I think if this had been devoted, maybe if this had been devoted more time to it, or, <laughs> I don't know, something had been set up about the way Leech was in the past. Um, well, I mean, this could have worked? Have. All the flashback, they always showed how great a character, how kind Leech was, but he has kind of been an asshat in the modern times with all I the guess that makes and stuff. But so. it's so weird to have this what feels like an unnecessary trust in the sense like leash isn't leash leash is this other guy that i swear uh -huh. we've only seen this chapter you know yeah but i actually kind of like this twist because this also allows for potential storytelling like if this guy isn't least at least isn't just like a massive hypocrite like humans are evil because they killed all of us i'm gonna kill all of them it just also it's seems like, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's gonna. It can easily give something like <clears throat> one misinterpreting another's will and what they would want. So this kid, whose name I haven't remembered because it hasn't come up e either at all or that much, is just thinking this is what Leith would want. But since we saw Leith awaken in that chamber earlier, we might also get a different perspective on this. But it's such a, like, it, A, I don't think this has been built up properly, and also it doesn't help that this character looks like so many other characters. Like, he kind of looks like Luck, he kind of looks like Fanzil, he kind of looks like uh, whoever, like, Finral's younger brother was. Mm. Like, and so it's, he's not very distinctive, and just because, like, because we've seen so little of this person and just this one chapter say like, oh, he was just a dude and like leashed to marry the sister and then they all died and now he's leashed. It's maybe it has been built up, but it feels really old and just with like a twist for the sake of a twist. And, and don't get me wrong. I actually think this motivation does kind of make sense. I, I don't think this is a motivation where, you know, you can say like, oh, well, you know, this is just weird. Why does he want to destroy all of humanity? Because that means that nothing's left. Like, no, he wants to resurrect the elves. Because he's like, these people are awesome and these people were massacred. So what if we just kill everyone else and just have them be around? They'll make. I think that's actually a believable notion rather than just a generic, I want to kill everyone because... Because I'm so and angry and wah wah wah, everyone's must suffer because I suffer and I'm from Final Fantasy. Yeah, but at the same time, you also have to think of like the layers of twistness and like, okay, so William Vengeance was sharing a body with Leashed, but Leashed wasn't Leashed. It was this other guy who was didn't look like Leashed but was reborn as leashed, but he was reborn as leashed within William Vengeance's body. It's just like, this is the most com complicated reincarnation I've ever heard of. Yeah, I, I it, it doesn't really that, feel like it's in service of much. I admit that this isn't like very easy to understand. It took me a few reads to actually get what was happening, but I still do like where this is going because for one, it's actually doing something interesting rather than doing the most standard vanilla shonen thing. Like, if this arc had just been, they go into Midnight Sun space, they face them off, off the end, I would have said, oh good, another arc of this, what a surprise, I'm going to be so invested. Now I actually am a little bit invested. Not a much, but I actually want to see where this goes. I, I am curious to see where it's going, and I think we are building up to, like, an actual reason why there was no trap set, like, when they showed up to... Like, because if it's a case of, like... 
him just wanting to resurrect the elves, maybe it makes sense why he wouldn't want to protect his subordinates. I, I guess we'll get to that. But uh, this is something that I feel like could be a lot stronger. But overall, I found really, really, really confusing. And maybe it's just a personal thing. Mm. No, I agree. Well... Yes, we could just look at something more sensible. The Promised Neverland, mean, Chapter 78. You mean Yakusoku no Neverland? I don't know the names. <laughs> I don't know the Japanese names of this. I totally don't have the Wikipedia page open for it right now. Uh, anyway, uh, this chapter was basically... It's basically just... Attack on Titan, but with characters I actually kind of like, so it's good. Uh, like, I mean, like, as in the focus has shifted to how are we going to fight the demons rather than just we need to escape the demons. Um, also, this does answer my, one of my criticisms from last time. Like, the dude wasn't just put to the ground, at least here. Like, he does pull a knife, but they just shoot it out of his hands. He tries to run, but they shoot his legs. Yeah, uh, it. I, I, there, there were some very good lines in this chapter, like where he was sort of talking about, like, "Come on, it's it's just a game, right?" Like that's all it was. Like it does show the disconnection, which I thought was very, very effective. Yeah, um, they they don't expect this sudden turnaround of, "Hey, these kids can actually fight now." Yeah, it was kind of the satisfying to see them, him running away and just connecting it to all the times he made those kids run away. Mm -hmm. And so that was what I, I think he's dead. I think that's what we're meant to believe mm -hmm. is that they killed him. Um, the also, other... this, this woolly hat girl could try out for Rambo. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, it's a little... established that last time, so... Yeah, I know. Ridiculous. I'm just saying this chapter. This chapter follows through on that. I kind of like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a bit silly. Yeah. Then uh, the other two demons, which I don't know why, just something about like the very well endowed demon makes me very uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> uh, because that's... of the rule thir four, eight, rule thirty four. Yeah, they're just the rule thirty four of each other. <laughs> which is, which is just a little strange. Um, no, and they're in like rule solid. 69. Rule thirty four is the there's porn of it, no exceptions. Oh no, it, I think it's both. I think there's probably porn of these two too. And then this one, they're like in solid snake outfits. Um. Yeah, they kind of look like they're in gimp suits or something. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know why these two just made me very very uncomfortable. <laughs> So I'm hoping that they die next chapter, because... I do also like that they note that these guys are the actually dangerous ones. Like, that one they killed, that was just a goober that they didn't expect to have any trouble with. Everyone mm -hmm. else, they're gonna actually have to think about. Yeah. Um, I also like the idea that they're sort of like reverse engineering the technology so that they can break through the masks. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and the they idea that don't make it like we now have a super weapon that hurts them. They point out like we got three, <laughs> five such, and mm -hmm. five shots total, and we gotta kill four people with them. Yeah, so that that much is interesting, and it's it's certainly making this thing seem more difficult. Um, yeah, uh, chapter's fine. Yeah, hopefully I guess. it will show that they have to get them some of the trap to ensure that they hit because they cannot afford to miss more than once. And I'd say that the first time they they shoot one, the demons will realize, oh shit, they can actually hurt us. We better just be more careful and make them waste those shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one small problem is that. We really don't know these characters. Yeah, that's that's definitely my big thing in the sense that, like, I feel like this would be more exciting if I could, like, I know they are saying their names in the chapter, but I wouldn't exactly, you know, <laughs> like, like the, the, this definitely isn't a case where I'd be like, oh yeah, uh, I uh. Pigtails glasses girl, they're my favorite. It's like I, I have no idea who these people are. 
Yeah, if they just like so, what if one of them dies, I'll be like, oh no, you existed, no. Like, but if it was like Ray and Billy Bob running around, then I'd already care a lot more. Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh, most I know about the 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 wool cap girl is that she seems a bit more psychotic than the others and more sadi more sadistic. Like she wants to hurt them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's fine. I don't think it's great, but I, I think it's okay. I don't know. I quite like these. They're cool action chapters. They're like well drawn and panelled out. Uh, I'm enjoying them on that level, and I'm curious to see where this goes. Uh, I'm guessing there's going to be stuff isn't just going to constantly go right. For the kids, there's got to be some kind of turnaround, so interested mm -hmm. to see what that's going to be. Yeah, and it's most likely going to go that way, because they did state that this guy's just the dweeb of the bunch. He's not going to be in much trouble. These others? Yeah, we got to plan a little more. And besides, there's still demons who just chop a tree in half with one swing of a spear. I'm not sure how that spear's even intact still. Like using that much force, but that is kind of terrifying. Hmm. Anyway, sh shall we move on to Boku Tatsu wa Benkyo Gadeki Nai? What? We he's never learn. We he's actually <laughs> <if> we never <laughs> learn. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh... This chapter was ah, ah it was the um mate to me yeah um yeah this was actually pretty funny yeah like um, it did kind of throw the same joke three times but it always varied up a little I, I it's it's crazy like the maid girl was like my least produced and she's like leaped up to being like maybe my second favorite one. Uh, she's been up there for me for a long time, just because yeah. of the way that she fucks with you, Ego. <laughs> it's really funny. Oh <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and this issue also had a popularity poll, I guess, if anyone wants to check that out. Um, I think it's probably obvious who I voted for, but yeah, if, if, if you're listening and you're interested, give give that a vote. Um, although, yeah. uh, don't, don't go to the link they actually put in the volume, just Google uh, Viz, we never learn popularity poll, and you'll find it. It's really weird. The link doesn't work for some reason. I voted for the pizza bet, so. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No, um, also, it's yeah, funny how fine. in the end they showed you guys kind of catching on to Asami's game. No, wait, was Asami the main girl? Which one was she? Uh, Asumi is yeah. the girl. Asumi. Yeah. He's kind of... You get, he's kind of starting to catch on to her schemes like she's... Like, in the end when he's... I wouldn't mind doing this to you every day. He just goes... <laughs> Enough! I won't fall for you anymore! Still blushing, but <laughs> understanding like she's just fucking with me. And I'd say my favorite panel is the one where... Kirisu is trying to hold the door in while Asumi's trying to get in, just... It's on... What page? Let me look it up. Anyway, just before she notices Yuiga there and grabs him, just... Let me in! Leave! Like, the two are death staring each other while trying to get the door to come their way. No, We Never Learn has been on a pretty good stretch of chapters recently, I... I... Guys, you here? I'm having some trouble with the Discord. So, is that everything? Uh, and can we move on? Yeah. There's no weave title there. Okay, sorry guys. I'm having some trouble with my Discord. I'm gonna re-log and log back in.
death pond in this chapter really stuck out to me. All right, I'm back. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I had to log out <coughs> for a second, so none of that was caught up for the last around half a minute. So, did we still have anything on we never learned? Uh, no, no we've, really. we've moved on. All right, so mm -hmm. we're moving on to Dexter, 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 Dexter. Yes, mm -hmm. we have. Um, I wonder. I do have to wonder what um, Senku's new invention is going to be. Smartphones. Uh, smartphones. <laughs> we created Facebook. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's it, it's a fine enough chapter. Um, I think. I, I do think maybe it's a little jam packed, I guess. Um, mm. But but I I do like the utilization of the death pond in this case with the wind. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and best girl Suika I... saves the day again. Mm hmm. Rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> yeah. I, and also, I, I really love Senku's line about the fact, like, nature's not an enemy nor an ally. It's totally impartial. It's just... A... Oh. And right after when he's done, so like, I didn't think about them thinking I made this, but yeah, totally did. <laughs> All right. You know. And we do see then... that the... Uh, why the hell can I not remember the spear guy's name all of a sudden? I'm supposed to be... Kinro? No, Hyoga. the log spear, the enemy. Hyoga. Hyoga is kind of a psychopath. He just casually kills four guys. Just to see if it'll work, yeah. Uh. The visual of the poison wind going past them is kind of metal. Oh, it's freaking awesome, man. <laughs> this is great. It's yeah. like, it's, yeah, um... Despite Attack on Titan, tendency, get your heart out. Yeah. Despite his tendency to go towards cheesecake at times, Boichi is a fantastic artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when... <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the chap, the final line, get excited, is definitely accurate. I'm excited for this. It's. I'm hoping we'll get to see some of Sukasa's kingdom just to kind of see what they're going up against because it's been a lot of, like... It's been a little vague as to what the actual yeah, threat it, is. Yeah, it's just kind of been, like, henchmen pop up. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, it is always good to see, like, the bad guys assemble at their lair uh, or, or, you know, their base um, before a thing. That's kind of one of the problems I had with the current arc in Doctor in a Black Clover, uh, just that we didn't ever get to see all of them, like, assembled in one place, getting ready mm -hmm. for the fight. Uh, so there wasn't really much of a sense of them as a unit. Yeah, also yeah, so I'm hoping nice we get to... some of that. Yeah, it would also be nice to kind of reaffirm Tsukasa's, like, morality on this issue. Like, so far it seems like they just become the generic antagonistic we want to kill all of these people here faction. Whereas Tsukasa on his first introduction kind of had death to him, and you saw that he was in the wrong, but there was an internal logic to his morality. Yeah. Uh, so, like, this was kind of an in between chapter for me, despite being the end of the fight and them burning down a good portion of the village. Yeah, the pacing's a little odd. I'll admit, um, it's not. It's it's not it's not the best pace chapter, bad. But I'm 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 definitely curious to see where it's going. All right, so um, shall we shall we move on to the jump starts then? Oh um, yes, please. Yeah, sure. I never I, I mean, never I got can't... my thought. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I never really it. got my thoughts in on Jujutsu Kaisen, but I my feelings haven't really changed since last week, which is basically. Anything yep. for me? Yeah. Um, it's like nothing ever has any impact to how it's drawn. Like him transforming into the demon form just kind of happens over a page and there's not much fanfare to it um like last chapter literally like his his grand his grandfather or, or father like died it's not yeah it's not great uh <laughs> it's not great that's what that's what all i can say about it it's maybe it appeals to some people it just doesn't appeal to me very much 
I don't know. I'm 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 kind of sick of Exorcist series. Yeah, it 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 there's just there's not much to really make it stand out. Not really. Um, Noah's notes, on the other hand. Yeah, that is... one. I'm very interested to read more of this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. <laughs> This is really, really weird to read for me because <laughs> because we, we made the joke when like this image first came out. There was essentially two characters I created on the form just slightly yeah. changed. <laughs> like uh... essentially, essentially just Rin and Gulch and the female character is nothing like Rin. Like they're they're essentially like very, very different. She's like she's she's short and that's pretty much it. That's the only thing they have in common. So, oh, Rin is shorter like than this. Drop this lawsuit for plag plagiarism. Well, no, because here's the thing. Then I was reading through it and I was like, okay. It was almost like the Yu Gi Oh! bridge joke. This guy, okay, this guy has silver hair and wears a long coat, just like Gulch. And he loves archaeology, just like Gulch. <laughs> and he's an asshole, just like. <laughs> and it just kind of goes like, holy shit, they're really, really similar. It's just. Like, right down to the fact that we find out they're both archaeologists, I was like, this is a fucking awesome coincidence. <laughs> um, yeah, and, it, and it's an entertaining chapter. I, I will say that I, I do find the female character slightly grating. Um, yeah, especially in the early on in the chapter where she's just making loose cat puns, and it's like, why? Is this a part of your character? Mine's What's just... bad cat puns? <laughs> It's, it's more just two major issues to me. One is the fact that, like, it's outright stated that, like, her motivation in life is, like, fuck it, I'll just, like, I don't need to study in school, I'll just have a family, like, I'll just get married. It's, like, Jesus. Mm. But, and But also just the way that she's drawn is, like, really distractingly exploitative. <laughs> I mean, they, they're they doing, like, the typical Gyaru thing with her, uh, with the whole, like, brightly coloured hair, kind of... She, she likes karaoke, she's, she wears her uniform in a pretty revealing way. Um, I think yeah, I'm but... quite used to having seen that in other series, though, and, like, aside from being a little trigger-happy on, like, the arse shots, like, kind of the upskirt stuff, like, this well, isn't that's... especially bad about it. No, I to me it does get a little over the top because it's not just the like really unfortunate like fan service thoughts. It's just like every way she's drawn. Like when she falls down the hole, she falls boobs first. <laughs> like it's just like I, th some I of think the... uh, I like, think I know what it is. I've had my I've had my standards for this lowered so far by the series Hajimete no Gal, which is just the trashiest harem show about Gyarus like ever. I saw like three episodes of it and it was just awful. Uh, so everything else with these kinds of characters, just like, eh, whatever. It's, it's, it's pretty tame by comparison. <laughs> that's, that's fair. I um, And for the most part, the chapter is very good. There are little things that like, I, I'm, I'm trying to move past. Like the fact that she just walks onto an excavation site that apparently has no security and no like fences. <laughs> It's a bit like what's it? it's a bit like the Super Mario Bros. movie. It is a little bit like that, with it just like here's just like an empty construction site with like incredibly valuable things. That leads um, to another world. Yeah. I'm sure that, I'm sure the creators of the Super Mario Brothers movie aren't gonna sue because I don't think they want to remind people that was a thing, but you know. <laughs> oh if this oh if the Super Mario Brothers have a case and I don't, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> um, but the actual, like, big twist of this chapter, it, it does feel... I mean, in general, I'm going to say, I do think this series feels like Dr. Stone. Yeah, it's, it's very much aping that kind of thing, but for history rather than science. Um, mm -hmm. And the concept is different enough that it's it's fine, but there is definitely that idea of main character is super enthusiastic about subject, uh, everything is time displaced, and we need to figure out how. Um, but also the concept of saving yeah, the world. Yeah, I can see because, what you mean. Be, be, because this 
series, what this series introduces. Um, it's it's funny. Is, oh, sorry, Jesse. No, no, go ahead. Go, you can go ahead. It's all good. Sorry, it's just like you guys are cutting out for me, so um, oh. it, it's sometimes I can't tell if you're talking or not. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, no, it is funny seeing already sort of people riding the Doctor Stone wave of imitators already when like. Mm -hmm. We still have stuff that's kind of aping Naruto a bit with Hero Aka and Black Clover so far, like, so far after Naruto started and in the case of Black Clover ended. Like, so it is funny to see that cycle just a lot quicker here. Yeah, um, but I actually think the idea that this series is based around <clears throat> is so ridiculous that I kind of love it. The mm. idea of loop theory because loop theory is such a ridiculous theory and the fact that it's based around and that they're trying to find a way to stop the loop is so like stupidly awesome that i kind of like it and to be honest if dr stone is going to get ripped off i at least like the fact that it's getting ripped off in such a genuinely entertaining way yeah another thing that slightly reminds me of is there's a there's a twist later on in astro lost in space the mm -hmm. echo that echoes this in some ways um i won't go into the specifics of what it is but um yeah, yeah that, that applies it to more of a sci-fi setting though whereas this is the interesting thing about this is that this is just seems like modern day earth so how is it going to play in here yeah no um i i overall i liked it i like this one mm -hmm. quite a bit yeah it's it's the first jump start pretty much in ages that I've really gotten into, so I I, I hope it keeps this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I guess I could briefly say that, like, Hunter Hunter's had A plot has kind of been losing me for ages, but it's introduced a B plot that I'm suddenly way more invested in than the actual, like, main thrust of the arc. So... Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair, fair. Mm -hmm. Look. <sighs> All right, so shall we shall we uh, round things off? Um, oh, you're done with those two manga? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just I can't really discuss since I can't read them. Hmm. Anyway, so um, it's weird. Like you, you were you were introducing us, but like I've kind of been doing the transition. So uh, who wants to do the round off? I guess. Uh, I guess uh, I'll uh, do it then because I haven't done any of them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this has been Stammer Stream here with Grail Nine, Doctor Hovind, and Doctor Nova. Though neither one is an actual doctor, as they just said at the beginning of the podcast. Or are you actually? <laughs> Uh, my flatmate's a doctorate student, so close enough. Yeah, exactly. Proxy. <laughs> so, no. Well, you can follow me on on Twitter, at Nuclear Android. You can follow Nova, well, at Dr. Nova. And you can follow Dr. Hovind, at Hovind with an H. You got anything else you want to plug here? Actually, I, I think Nova's at is at Jonah Lev Snow, isn't it? Or was it? Yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> Depending on where we're going. Uh, well, yeah, if I've, he doesn't know, then I'm not going to take got, any shame for not knowing. I've, I've got an episode of the Drunk Cast series that I need to upload. I've just been sitting on it like a lazy ass for months. Um, but I will get around to that. There's not much that needs to be done. <laughs> just when I have a free afternoon, I'll try and get around to it. Um, yeah, that, that's everything, really. All right, nice. All right. Boku Botachi wa Benkyo Gadeki Nai. And on that note, bye, everybody. Bye.